Hello. As you can probably tell from the lighting, it is morning. Um, I am just currently sitting outside of the testing center. Uh, today's the day. I am taking my certification exam today to become a certified diabetes care and education specialist. Um, this has been a long time coming. I decided I wanted to be a diabetes educator my senior year of high school, which was 2010. And there's a lot that goes into that. And so it's taken me since then, it's 2021 now, 11 years to get to the point where I can sit for my exam. Um, so I'm super excited actually. I thought I would be a lot more like nervous and I am, the nerves are there, but I'm overall pretty excited to like do it. So basically up until this point, I went and got my undergrad degree in human development and family sciences because a lot of people that want to teach do that. And I figured, especially for pediatrics, that would really help for that aspect of the job, the teaching part. Then I also had to become a nurse. So I went to nursing school. I did an accelerated course over 13 months and got my bachelor's in nursing. So I have two bachelor's degrees and that was within the span of five years. Then the tricky thing is to get enough hours to become certified as a diabetes educator, diabetes care and education specialist. You need to get a job as a diabetes educator, diabetes care and education specialist. And so that's hard to do with no nursing experience. So I got a job in inpatient pediatrics as an RN for two years. Um, and after two years, I applied to work in a diabetes clinic as a nurse and I got that, which was awesome. <laughs> and then th about three months later, I was promoted to a diabetes educator and that's when I started to accrue my hours. So if you don't know, you have to be within a certain field to become a diabetes educator, diabetes care and education specialist. So I'm an RN. You have to have two years of experience working in your chosen field, which I have how many years now? six years and you have to have a thousand teaching hours and for me that's what delayed me the most it took me a long time to get enough hours because not everything counts i always thought like okay I calculated it out i work 40 hours a week over this many days this is how long it'll take to get a thousand hours wrong <laughs> um it does not work like that not every even patient education session counts it has to be very specific for diabetes self-management education and support and so um it took a long time to get the hours but i got the hours and you also have to have 15 continuing ed credits which i have and then you apply to take the exam and you pay a fee and so we're up to that point now i've been studying a lot and it is 8 34 my exam is at 9 i'm just trying to finish my coffee before i go in I scoped out the location of my testing center on Friday, today's Monday, um, just so I would know where it was and everything, and I got here nice and early. So yeah, honestly, I was more, I like started to freak out when I saw the testing center on Friday. But now that I've done a lot of studying over the weekend, and before that, obviously, um, and I did my practice exams and they're going pretty well, so I'm feeling pretty confident. I actually didn't tell anybody at work, except for my boss, that I was taking the exam today. Um, I guess and my diabetes provider because she works in, at my work, but I had to tell her to get a note saying that I could have my diabetes stuff with me. But anyway, um, because I was worried that I would take it and if I don't pass, I don't wanna tell everyone and like have everyone be asking me every, like when I get back in, like, oh, how'd it go? And then I have to tell them I didn't make it. So um, hopefully I pass and I won't have to worry about that anyway. But I feel like I'm talking fast because I'm trying to hurry up and finish my coffee so I can go in. So I did ask for special accommodations for this exam. For my NCLEX exam, my nursing exam, I didn't. And I really regretted it because it added a lot more stress on the day of just like really trying to make sure my blood sugars were perfect before I went into the exam. Not too low, not too high. And I worried about my medical devices and it was just, it wasn't good. So even though I don't, I don't view my diabetes as like necessarily a disability. I technically do still need special accommodations if something were to happen with my blood sugar. So I did request special accommodations. I did the extra paperwork and you know, got my doctor's signature so I can have snacks, water, bathroom breaks. I get more time. So that way if I do go low or high or something weird happens with my diabetes, it won't take away from the four allotted hours. So I get six hours as a little buffer and I get a separate testing area. So. That way it just takes away that stress of like, okay, if something did happen to my diabetes, uh, my blood sugars, cause you can't always control it. I'm gonna do my best, but like sometimes things happen. Um, it's not gonna affect my results or it shouldn't. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna stop talking. I'm gonna drink coffee and I'll check in with you after. Wish me luck. 
Uh, hey guys, I just spent three hours taking my exam. And as you can see, the lighting is way different. It's now noon and it's so hot in my car. And I passed! <laughs> you are now looking at the newest Certified Diabetes Care and Education Specialist, formerly known as Certified Diabetes Educator. It hasn't fully sunk in yet, um, but yeah, I passed. I, I passed. The exam was harder than I thought it was gonna be, just based on my practice questions. I feel like the practice was easier, but I actually did about as good if not better on the real exam than I did on the practices. So after 10 years and a bunch of teaching hours and a bunch of studying, I can officially say I'm a certified diabetes educator, certified diabetes care and education specialist, but my goal has been to be a certified diabetes educator for so long. So it feels better to say that, but it's, it's changed the name since. Um, but yeah, you guys, we did it. We did it. I studied so much. <laughs> I will fill you in later on how I studied, um, but yeah, I am sitting in the parking lot. I just got out of the exam and I passed. I never have to take that again, as long as I keep up with my certification. <laughs> I'm gonna go get some lunch. All right, back again. So I just thought I'd briefly jump on and tell you how I studied for the exam. Um, so basically when I reached I can't remember if it was 500 teaching hours or 750. It was one of those two where I was like, okay, I'm getting closer to my hours. I want to start studying. And so I used Beverly Tomasian's Diabetes Education Services modules. And I bought a test kit bundle one, two, three, and boot camps or something like that. And I would just listen to those. My boyfriend lives uh, about two hours away from me. And so that was a really good opportunity to listen to the podcast version of those. Um, just while I'm in the car driving, kind of passively listening to them but actively I mean I would um because they do practice questions and stuff so I would answer that and then they also have exams at the end and I would just do those at a different time when I had a chance to like sit at a computer and stuff or sit on my phone so I did those and then I saved the practice exam questions until right before so I actually did all the practice exams through that program yesterday and then prior to that hi amps Prior to that, I made a bunch of note cards. Um, so basically, I knew I was really weak on medications, especially there's just so many details that go into medications. I'm not a prescriber. Like, I just feel like there's a lot of medications that I don't know super well. And this also has some lab stuff in it and like which meds do you prescribe first and like all that kind of stuff. So made note cards on that and studied those. And I made the note cards based off of the Beverly Tomasian info. Overall, I really recommend that, this is not sponsored, um, really recommend that program I think it was super helpful to like have modules to explain stuff to me to go over how to take this exam how it's structured what kind of answers they're looking for all that kind of stuff so that's basically how I studied and then obviously I just use my experience as a type 1 diabetic um, my experience in my job uh, my nursing experience all that kind of comes together but yeah so I've been studying for this exam for quite a while been working towards it for 11 years technically if you count like when I decided to start doing it all of undergrad, nursing school, getting my nursing experience, getting my education hours. Um, so yeah, it's been a long road, but I'm officially Danica, RN, BSN, CDCES. Yay, thanks for following along with me. Bye.